welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to take this, my Banana Pi BPI F3 RISC-V single bore computer that I recently reviewed on the channel, and I'm going to use it to build a NAS, a network attached storage device. And this is going to be my first practical RISC-V project. So let's go and get started. Right, here we have our BPI F3, which is an $88 octa-core RISC-V board with a Space MIT K1 system on a chip and 4 gigabytes of RAM. It's also got a number of storage options, including microSD card, onboard MMC, here 16 gigabytes, and underneath we find an MKEED M.2 slot, which is a PCIe 2.1 two lane, and it's currently fitted with this crucial P3 500 gigabyte SSD. So if we now just put this back like that and to connect everything up like this and turn on the power and go across to the video output to discover the desktop, it's a few moments later now it has booted and we're running here Bamboo OS, which is a Debian-based Linux distro optimized for Space MIT RISC-V hardware. And if we go to Terminal and we do an LSBLK, a list block devices, we can see all the storage on the system. We have got the microSD card from which we're currently running Bamboo OS. We have got our MMC flash storage and we've got our NVMe M.2 SSD. Now, one option to build a NAS with this hardware is to run the NAS software from microSD card or the onboard EMMC and to use our NVMe SSD as the storage drive. And this would certainly work perfectly well. However, I thought we'd be a bit more adventurous than this and set up a two drive NAS in RAID configuration. And so what we're going to do is to close everything down. Let's just uh, do that and go back to the board where I'm going to take things apart again, like this, and this, and this, and this. And I'm also going to remove the M.2 SSD. I think it'll go on the other way up, won't it? There we are. That's good. And I'll remove the M.2 SSD. There we go. And the reason I've taken this out is because we're going to fit this, an M.2 PCIe to twin SATA port adapter. This particular one cost me £16.41 on Amazon UK and is also available for $15.99 on Amazon US. As we can see in the listing, the board is based on a JMB582 control chip and this matters because the Banana Pi BPI F3 wiki tells us that the M.2 slot on the board supports a JMB582 expansion card to SATA. And it's possible others may work, but I didn't think we'd take any risks. I thought I'd get a board with exactly the right control chip. It's also very important to note that our card is M keyed, which is what we need to plug into the BPI F3 M.2 slot. However, there are also many A and E keyed PCIe to SATA cards available with a JMB582 control chip, such as this one here. So it's important to be very careful to purchase the right M.2 to SATA adapter for your project. Anyway, Let's now fit the card. Here we go, just drop it in there like that and put in the screw. There we go, and we're done. And there we are, our RISC-5 SBC now has two SATA ports. And for our test build, I'm going to hook them up to these two 750 gigabyte Western Digital Black two and a half inch hard drives, which are right now are mounted in this mount I put together when I was using them with an Odroid HC4, building a NAS with that board back in a previous Explaining Computers video. And the drives will of course require power as well as a data connection, and on the BPIF3 there are actually two SATA power connectors. If we just take it off like that, you can see down here we have two SATA power connectors. They're not standard power connectors for SATA, but they do supply both 5 volt and 12 volt power. However, I'm not sure I've got enough power going into the board to power two hard drives. And also, I don't have the right cable to connect to these anyway. And so what I'm going to do is to power our drive separately using this, which is an old 
IDE to USB adapter. And in fact, I'm not going to use the USB bit or the IDE interface here. All I'm using this for is the power supply. And the power supply into this gives us a Molex power output. And I'm going to connect this to a Molex to SATA adapter and a SATA splitter. So we've got power to power two hard drives. And yes, this is going to be a bit of a mashup, but this is a test build. This will work perfectly well to see if we can build a NAS using our RIS-5 system. So let's use the magic of filmmaking to get everything connected up. And uh, here we have our final RIS-5 NAS test rig. I'm sure some people are worried about my cable management, but uh, everything in here is at least nice and secure. Everything's fastened down to a baseboard so I can relocate this unit during tests. I've been using my friend BluTac to uh, fasten everything down. So I think we should now see if all this works. So first of all, I'll uh, turn on the power to the drives. I can hear the drives spinning up. That's always a, a nice sound. We don't hear it as much these days, do we? But uh, anyway, the drives are spinning. So let's turn on the power to the Banana Pi BPI F3. Or we've got little flashing indicators on our SATA board. That's going to be a good sign. We can't see the indicators on the Banana Pi here, but I can, I can see them just under here. It is working. And we're still here running the desktop version of Biambu OS. So let's go across to that desktop. Here we are, where well, we can see that our drives have mounted. They're down here and they're up here as well. Look, we've got a drive called Scissors. Let's open that up, having a little think. There it is. It's an empty drive, as is that one. And if we go to the terminal, we do an LSBLK. We can see them on the system now. We've still got our EMMC and our microSD card, but we've also got the two drives, which for some reason are appearing here as SSDs rather than hard drives, but that really doesn't matter. And I wouldn't mind just doing a test of their speed. So we'll just clear the screen to be tidy and bring up the uh, command to test the speed of the first hard drive. It's not going to be a spectacular speed because it's a two and a half inch hard drive, but uh, let's see what we get. There we are, 126 megabytes a second. That's not too bad. Let's do the other one as well, let's DB. And what are we going to get on this? Should be very similar, same model of drive on the same interface. And uh, yes, 124.43 megabytes a second. And so with our hardware now all set up, it's time to go in search of some RIS-5 NAS software. Greetings. Here we now are on another PC where we're going to go to the Banana Pi F3 wiki. And here, if we scroll down in our options to system image and we click on Biambu under Linux, we find two possible software images, one for a desktop version of Biambu OS, that's one we were just running, and one for a NAS version, which is rather handy. So let's click on the uh, Google Drive link here. And there are two possible files. And if we click on them, we can see what they are. No, go away, Google. And uh, we'll click on that one, as I said. And this is the file, which is .img.zip. And the one down there is uh, just .zip. And what's the difference, you cry? Well, the difference is that here, the .img file is for microSD card, and the straight .zip file is for using eMMC flash storage. And here we're going to be writing the image to a microSD card, so we'll use the uh, .img.zip file. We will download it like that. Yes, Google, I know you can't scan it. I don't care. We'll just uh, save the file. And what we're going to get here is a command line version of Biambu OS with the Open Media Vault NAS software added. So let's speed on through until the end of the download. There we are, it has completed. So let's get rid of the web page and we'll uh, launch Belena Etcher, which is waiting to flash the file to our micro SD card. Let's pick up the image. There it is. Select the target. I've got a micro SD card plugged into this PC, so we'll just select that and flash our image. And yes, Windows, we really want to do it. And there we are. We now have the NAS version of Biambu OS on our micro SD card. So let's go back to the BPI F3, remove the micro SD card that's got the desktop version of Biambu OS on it, and insert the card with the NAS version that we've just written. There we are. And we turn on the power to the drives and also boot up the board itself by turning on its power. And if we look at the video output, which sadly I can only record here by pointing a camera at the screen, very strange. But anyway, what is going on here? The system is booting. And if we speed on through, there we are. It's telling us we can manage the system by visiting the Open Media Vault workbench. 
which we can do by going to the system's local IP address, which is displayed here as 192.168.1.105. So, if we go back to our other computer and enter that IP address into a web browser like that, there we are, we've got the login screen for Open Media Vault, where we'll log in using admin as the username, like that, and the default password for admin is Open Media Vault, like that. There we go, we'll just press F11, a bit more space on the screen, and we'll uh, get rid of the menu navigation like that as well. And it's telling us that the dashboard has not yet been configured, so we'll go to the settings page. What should we add? Just a few things, CPU, table of file systems might be useful, I guess. We'll add uh, memory, and we'll add uh, system information, that'll keep us uh, happy, I think, and we'll click on save. And there we are, it's configured our dashboard. We've got a working Open Media Vault system. But before we do any more setup here, I'm going to shut the system down so I can relocate it to run headlessly in a more convenient location. And so here I'll now just select shut down like that. Confirm we want to shut down. Yes, we do. We will shut down for relocation our Open Media Vault Risk 5 NAS. Right, I've now got our Risk 5 hardware running headlessly, as you can see, and back in the web interface, we're now going to configure our RAID storage and share it for network access. Whilst here, as the system information reminds us, we're definitely running on a Risk 5 system, the tasks we need to complete are standard Open Media Vault setups, as I've covered in many other videos. And so, because I've covered Open Media Vault before, I'm going to go through the actual setup here quite quickly. So, let's go home and go to storage. Let's just check out our disks. There they are, and hopefully they'll populate. They have. We can see we've got our two hard drives all waiting to be configured in a RAID setup. So we'll go back to storage and software RAID, where nothing is currently set up, and we'll add a software RAID. We have to pick our RAID level. It's going to be mirror. We can't use RAID 5 because it requires three drives, and we've got two. And uh, we now have to select our devices, and I suspect this might not work. It won't work, look, it only sees our eMMC flash storage. And the reason for this, do we want to discard these changes? Yes, we do. The reason for this is that the drives I'm using here, the disks I'm using here, have been used for all sorts of setups before, so what I need to do is to wipe these drives before we can use them. So we'll select that drive there, and we'll go to wipe. Do we really want to wipe it? Yes, we do, like that. And we'll do a quick wipe, or we'll be here for a very long time. And now we'll just close that down. And we'll do the same thing on that drive there. And once again, it's done. So if we now go back to a storage and software RAID and try again, add a new software RAID, mirror, and then select our devices. Oh, look, we can now select our two hard drives like that and uh, save. And we now need to apply our changes. So we'll uh, click on the tick like that. Do we want to apply? Yes, we do. And this will take a little bit of time. And so I'm going to go and make a cup of tea and I'll come back to you when our software RAID setup is complete. And here I am back again. The process has now finished. It took a couple of hours. So we'll now go to storage and file systems and create a file system, which is going to be X4. And we'll select our device, which is going to be our software RAID we just created, and we'll uh, save that, and use the magic of filmmaking to fast forward in time. And there we are, we now have our file system, we can close that, and we've now automatically been taken to mount, so we can mount our file system, we'll select what we've just created, and uh, click on save, and then wait to confirm pending changes, we're always doing that in Open Media Vault, we'll apply those as well, yes we will. And there we are, our RAID volume is now online. And if we wanted to, we can now go back to home and we could go to users and create one or more users and give them lots of different access rights. But to keep things simple here, I'm just going to return to storage and we're going to select shared folders and we're going to create a shared folder like that. We'll give it a name, we'll call it risk five share. That sounds appropriate. We'll select a file system, it will be the one we've just created, and we'll set access permissions to everyone, read, write, and then save. And as previously, when the message comes up, 
will apply changes. There we go. Next, to allow other computers to access our shared folder, we will go back home and we will go to Services and SMB CIFS. And here we'll go to Settings and we will enable that service and just scroll down and click on the Save. And again, confirm changes. And then finally, we will go back a level and select Shares and we will create a share. We'll pick a shared folder, which of course the one we've created. Remember, we're going to set the permissions here to guests only, which will allow anybody on the network to see this particular share. And of course, once again, we have to click on save and then guess what? We'll accept pending configuration changes. And there we are. Things are now complete. Let's go back home. Let's go to the dashboard because we've set everything up We've now got our drives in RAID configuration and shared for access publicly across the network. Greetings. Here I am back again and the system has now been operational in a nice stable fashion for quite some time. In fact, about 19 hours as we can see here. And I've made a couple of very small changes, not least I went into system here and to date and time and updated my time zone so it's accurate. And I've also gone into storage and I've gone into disks and for each of the hard drives I've gone in and edited the drive just to set a spin down time. This was actually uh, disabled but I thought it was best to have the drive spinning down so they wouldn't be uh, thrashing all the time which wouldn't be good for the drives. And I've also accessed the share on the Chrome OS Flex PC I have connected to my television. And that's worked very well. I can now access video files which are stored on the RISC-5 NAS on the Chrome OS Flex PC. Check them on the TV. That's very good. And I've also successfully accessed the share on my Windows 10 laptop. However, I've yet to access it on the computer we've been using in this video to access the NAS. So let's just... Uh, Get rid of that a second and let's try and make it work here. Let's map network drive. We'll map it to drive. I think we'll use drive X here and we'll browse the network. It's having a think. Thinky, thinky, think. And there we are. It's found the device. It's found the share. Let's select that and OK and uh, finish. And oh, look, we've accessed the files the same way we did on the other two PCs I've just mentioned. We can see it sitting there now. Uh, RISC-V share is accessed as a uh, drive X. And uh, let's just do a quick test of speed by taking one of these files and copying it somewhere else. We'll take that file and we'll do a copy. This will give us a read test, of course, and we'll do a paste like that. And, oh, that's rather good, isn't it? 113 ish, 114 megabytes a second. That's about the limit of gigabit Ethernet. And so clearly, our RISC 5 NAS is a success. It works. And I think it's pretty cool that we can now build a NAS using off the shelf RISC 5 hardware and software. Right now, no RISC-V board provides the most practical or cost-effective means of building a NAS. However, the fact we now have hardware and software available that allows a private individual to build a RISC-V NAS has to be, I think at least, another significant milestone for the development of RISC-V. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, Please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.